There is recently a discussion of death here, and I'd like to weigh in. I don't believe in death. I don't think it's possible. Because, from what we see, the universe seems to be infinite. And if the universe is infinite, that means that any potential experience is actual experience. Infinity is negated by the introduction of something which does not exist. If there is infinite substance, if there is infinite being, then nothing does not exist. And so, when you start talking about death, let's first define what is the entity which dies. You know, I don't think that we have this sort of persistent identity, the, the you, that whether you call it, you know, the transmigration of the universal soul through this form or whatever, there is no real being to it, except its mere fact of being in each instant. But as far as grouping it together arbitrarily by a timeline, saying from birth to death that is one person, it really is only being derived from our everyday experience of individuality. And that's, in a sense, socially constructed. We are individuals by virtue of our continuous shared experience of a social space. And we define ourselves according to our obligations to others. And it's not necessarily human others, but external beings that mirror a continuity in ourselves because they, they show us that we are the same thing. They show us by our experience with them, our remembered experience with them, that we are something that again comes back to these same places or things or people. But lacking that, there's really nothing that unites ontically your experiences with each other. The only thing that there really is, is memory, which exists as a reflection of this external experience that we have. And our memory is what brings past into the present. But in, in every case, the identity really exists in the present. You are not your past, you are your present. And your memories are in the present. And so in that way, we bring our pasts into our presents, but only by simulation. So we don't necessarily have a being, a soul that is our own only, that we stand to lose. What we might say instead is that we stand to lose our memory. But is that even true? I don't believe so. If the universe is infinite, which it seems to be, then those minds which are larger than yourself would host your own thoughts, your own memories. Maybe not exclusively, but they can, could be expected to. I mean, we are at a very low level in terms of our computational ability compared to, you know, infinity. <laughs> if infinity is out there, then any potential experience is had by someone. And so if a potential experience includes those experiences which remember the things that you remember, but go on to do other things besides not exist, then you can draw an infinite timeline of continuous memory-linked experiences. Now, in my view, each one of those individual experiences exist momentarily, and their identities are only momentary, but if you want to use the sort of shared memory definition of identity, then 
you persist because something is out there to remember what you remember. And that's all that really matters in terms of a perception of a timeline, because we construct our conception of a flow of time based on our perception of time delineated moments. But that those are all brought into these presents where we are by memory. We construct that conception of time by this mechanism. And really all it is is an imprint in our minds of some other state. It's, it's, it's language. Language allows for memory because we have symbology which refers to an outline, you know, it's, it's an outline of some theoretical experience that we're not directly accessing but which we can refer to in the outline of. You know, I remember these details just like a story will outline certain details. You know, we have this, this symbology of memory and through that we infer in the present our continuous existence. But, I don't know, when I was younger, for example, I used to often wonder, I wonder if I was just kidnapped by aliens and implanted with all the memories that I've had so far. And really, this is a brand new experience, but I just remember it as being part of this other timeline. Now, those aren't really the thought experiments that I use anymore, but you can sort of see the point. So, if you believe that the universe is of a sufficient scope to include computational entities, which would or could host your symbology of a past, then you could rightly say that you, your continuous experience, can, it, it extends beyond what you think of as the death of your body. And that's not even taking into account the fact or the idea that your experience, your mental experience, is not necessarily linked with just this one body. If the mind is a function of the brain, then it is not necessarily only one brain which produces this function. Now, it will be perceived as being singular. An experience must be delimited down to only certain details, because that's the definition of the identity of a mind. But there's no such restriction on the brain which runs your mind. You, the experience of a brain, you could dissect your own brain, and that experience of a dissection of your own brain must reveal a singular entity that you're examining. But it's not necessarily, you know, I mean, imagine the scenario where you're dissecting your own brain and thinking about it. Well, that brain that you're dissecting exists phenomenologically for you, and that phenomenological brain is not necessarily the ontic brain that simulates the phenomenological experience. You could imagine, like, a brain in a vat, or, you know, I guess the Matrix is a nice pop culture example. You know, someone in the matrix is in the matrix dissecting their brain, but the brain that they're dissecting is not the brain that's lying in the vat somewhere. It's, so you see, see what I'm saying, I suppose. Well, that's something to think about. I don't believe in death because the universe seems to be infinite. And if the universe is infinite, then your mind is not run by only one body, and there are more than one levels of mind that incorporate within their larger identity your memories. So, although pantheism does not necessarily conceptualize it as God, uh, of God as the great mind, I mean, really, in a sense, it steps beyond that. And I could sort of articulate it in another way, which might make sense. Uh, you could think of being, because we are being, um, we are one 
aspect of being, experiencing being through being. And that being can be thought of spatially or temporally. And these are the two modes that seem to be available to us. There may be others. But it really just seems to be a way of describing what is pre-existent to us. The form, the mathematics, the structure seems to be pre-existent to the individual iterances that we are exposed to. The potentiality for all language exists already. You know, the, the potentiality for all logical statements, for all arrangements of physical matter, you know, if, if you believe in matter, which I don't, but the, for the arrangement of all information, uh, if that already exists. Well, anyway, your time experience is not purely time. It's, it's spatial and temporal. And you could think of the maximum mind as being that whose spatial quality increases with proportion to its temporal dimension. I mean, think of it as like a, uh, it, it's a piece of paper. The vertical dimension is time. The horizontal dimension is space. And a larger moment-for-moment uh, moment will have a greater proportion of space to each m moment of time. You know, and then the smaller will have a greater percentage of, or you know, proportion of time for each unit of space that it's able to conceive of. Now, if you extend that to its limit, you could have beings which are only able to think of one spatial entity for every one spatial or every one temporal moment, and that would be equivalent to the thought of a perfect stasis. Because without multiple events at each moment of thought, there's nothing to compare it to because you can't bring memory into the subsequent moments because there's no room. If you only have one spatialized information identity per temporal slice, then that amounts to an undifferentiated experience. The simplest mind. Now, if you go the other way, and you expand the spatial dimension for every moment of time, then you approach, and, and it's, it's not clear whether it's possible, but you approach the infinite space for each moment of time, in which case sub subsequent moments of time would be identical. Because if you already have infinity in one moment of time, then the next moment of time is identical. And that also represents a undifferentiated experience. Undifferentiated in time because all content is exposed in an eternal moment. In that sort of eternal moment, uh, you have all memory of everything. And there is no change. There is no death. It's all preserved. All information exists in that space of the mind of the absolute form, in a sense. Um, yeah, so that's what I had to say about death. Like I said, I don't believe in it. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Now, it might make sense if the universe were finite, but tell me that how that works. What is it that limits the universe? What is that limiting force, and is that not part of the universe? And why does that limiting force decide to create some things and not others? And how does it go about doing that? And if it's not a mind that decides, and it's just physical inevitability, how is it that the logic for physics was determined in only such a way? I, I suppose when you say that the universe started from a certain set of principles, who set those principles? And what, well rather, what set those principles? What action brought those principles and not others into being? And that's, until I have an answer for that, the only logical thing to assume is that the universe is infinite. 
And if the universe is infinite, then you have the infinite mind or the infinitely simple mind. And your, your ontology is idealistic. And reality is information. And death is impossible. And that's sort of a dissection of God in pantheism, as I see it. So, thanks for listening.